Hey Math 43, let's start to take a look at our sample exam and we've got our first question, the free response question. And it says men's shirts are determined by their neck sizes. Suppose that men's neck sizes are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 15.7 inches and a standard deviation of 0.7 inch. Uh, and a retailer sells men's shirts in size mediums, small, medium, large, and extra large where the shirt sizes are defined below. So before I even get going, things that I, I hear in this that are interesting to me, approximately normally distributed, right? And I see mean of 15.7 inches, standard deviation of 0.7. And the thing that I'm really going to pay attention to, I see these inches here, I see some units. So I know I've got a numerical variable. And really, like always, start with what is your variable? Well, the variable in this particular problem is men's neck sizes. Right? And then the units are inches. So this is numerical. It's, it's technically continuous numerical because we measure um, we measure distance, but even if it was if we weren't sure, I see the phrase normally distributed. So I know I'm on the normal distribution, which is a good piece of information to know. And I usually I will write something like this that our variable is normally distributed. It's centered at 15.7 with a standard deviation of 0.7. So that's the information I get just from the setup. And let's see what part A says. It says, because the retailer only stocks the sizes listed above, what proportion of customers will find that the retail does not carry any shirts in their sizes? So again, I see proportion. This is one of the P words. So I'm going to get a probability. So there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to break this down into two ways. All right, so I'll, I'll talk about, I, I will call one method one, and I'll, I'll talk about the other one. I'll just call it method two. And you have to figure out which one makes more sense in your brain, right? So whichever one seems to gel better, go with that. But when I hear something like, I want the probability that this retailer does not carry these sizes, I think of the complement rule, and that would be one minus the probability that the retailer carries the sizes. And we know the sizes they carry, they go from 14 to 18. So what I could do here is say, well, this will be one minus normal CDF, and I would go 14, 18, 15.7, and then 0.7, right? So I would crunch that number, and whatever came back out, that would be my answer. And actually, let me just scoot this down. I'm going to put one step like a little bit in between here. And I would say that this would be one minus the probability that X was between 14 and 18, right? Because the, they carry the sizes between 14 and 18. We want the complement to that, so I'm using the complement rule. And I'll go crunch this on my calculator in a bit. If you wanted to directly do the probability that some uh, a retailer would not carry your size, well, there's two ways that happens. That happens if your next size is less than 14, or if your neck size is greater than 18, right? And when we use that or rule, we're using, if you go back to chapter three, we're using formula one, right? Probability of A or B is A plus B, or probability of A plus the probability of B. Let, let me actually write it out so you can see this. A or B, this is from chapter three, it's probability of A plus the probability of B minus any overlap, all right? And A in this case is X is less than 14, Right? And B in this case is X is greater than 18. And there is no overlap. You can't have a neck size that is less than 14 inches and greater than 18 inches at the same time. So this part of the formula just goes away because those events are disjoint. So at this point, then I, can, I have to run two normal CDF calculations here, and that's fine. So we would have to do normal CDF will go low, high, mean, standard deviation, and then we have, oops, not probability, let me write normal CDF. Actually, I'm gonna run out of room, so I'm gonna write it down here. This would be normal CDF. And then we would go low, high, mean, standard deviation. Now I'm gonna cut over to my calculator app and run these two numbers for you, and I'll crunch all of them. All right, and my calculator app's gonna behave just like my, uh, or I should say my, yeah, the app will behave just like the physical calculator in this particular instance. So let's do the first one. Let's do the complement rule. So I want my, one minus the probability that they carry those shirt sizes. So they carry them from 14 to 18. We had 15.7 for the mean and, oops, let me get that decimal point in there. 
15.7 for the mean and 0.7 for the standard deviation. So we get this 0 0.008. Okay, then we were going to do it method two where we wanted to find the probability that somebody's next size was less than 14 or greater than 18. Now that's going to require two normal CDF. Oops, let me get normal CDF. Two normal CDF commands. So I had to do low, which would have been negative infinity to 14, 15.7 and 0.7. And then I would want to add to that another normal CDF, and this was 18 to infinity, and then we had 15.7.7. Now, when I hit enter, I should get the exact same number, and you see that popping up, because it's two different ways to do the same problem. So let me head back to my notes here, and let's go ahead and say that this number here was 0 0.008, right? And if I use method two, that was also 0 0.008. So like I said, Whichever one makes more sense in your head, use that version. All right, use a sketch of a normal curve, or using a sketch of a normal curve, illustrate the proportion, there's a P word, of men's shirts who um, is size medium. So if I look at medium, it looks like it's from 15 to 16. So I want the proportion that X is between 15 and 16. Now that's going to be a normal CDF. And we're going to go low high, mean, standard deviation. And let's go graph this. And I just, just on graphing it, I wanna get an idea of what this number should be. So we had 15.7 here, and we know that if we go deviations up and down, we will scale our x axis. And our deviations are 0.7. So let me start, I have my physical calculator in front of me, you can't see it, but I'm gonna start adding 0.7 just so I can scale out the x axis. It looks like this would have been 16.4. And let me add another 0.7. So this would have been 17.1 and 17.8. And I can go head down the other way also by subtracting the deviations. I would get 15 here. I think I'm going to have 14.3 here. And let me subtract another one. That would get me 13.6. And of course, I want to label these, right? This is next sizes and this is in inches. Okay, so now I wanna go between 15 and 16. Oops, excuse me, let me change pen colors. I'll go to the more muted one. So we're gonna go from 15 to, now 16 would be somewhere in here. It's not my best drawing, but it's also like always oh, not my worst. So I want this area. And if I look at what I'm shading, I'm shading a good chunk, right? I'd say somewhere around 40, 50, 60%, just trying to guesstimate that kind of looks like it's about half, maybe a little less than half, I'm not sure, right? So just, let me switch back here. This area is maybe 40 to 60%. All right, and I, I mean, that's a pretty wide range, but what I'm saying, or what I'm trying to get at is, if I go into my calculator and I get something like 0 0.20, I would know something was wrong. That's that's too small. 20% is too small, right? And if I got something like 90%, that's too large. I need something in the middle for my numerical calculations to match my graph. So let's go see what this would leave us with. All right, let me go to my calculator and let's run normal CDF. And then we're going to go 15, 16, 15.7, and 0.7. And what do I get? 51%. That's right at around what I thought I should get. So let's go here, and this would be, oops, 0.507. Great. So there's about a 51% chance that a customer is asking for a medium, right? That's a pretty big, that's a pretty big proportion. That's probably the largest um, proportion of any one of these four sizes. In fact, it, it has to be. If this is about 51%, all the rest of them have to be smaller because they need to total out to 100%. So this is the majority here. Okay. Let's see, it says out of 12 randomly selected customers, what is the probability that exactly four will request a medium? So our variables changed here. So here, if you look at what we're keeping track of, we're keeping track of the number of customers who request a medium out of 12, right? So let me write this. X is now the number of customers who request a size medium in our sample of 12 customers. So if you 
step back here. We're no longer talking about neck sizes, right? There, that's that's done. We're already we're categorizing categorizing people as you're in a size medium. So now we're keeping track of these twelve folks that are coming in. How many are going to say they want a medium? Right? It could be zero of the next twelve, one of the next twelve, two, three, all the way on up to twelve. But we want to figure out the probability that exactly four are doing this. Now, this is all of a sudden a discrete random variable, right? Because I would count the number of customers who request a medium. I wasn't given a table, so I I might need to make one, but what I'm going to check first is, is it binomial? So I do have a fixed number of observations. I can call success in this case. The customer requests medium. that is the letter M written terribly. <laughs> All right. Trials are going to be independent, right? The customers are coming in at random and one customer having a medium doesn't tell me whether or not the next one is going to have a medium. And what is the probability of success? Well, the su probability of success is what's the probability that a customer requests a medium? Well, we just found it in part B. It's 0.057. Oh, I think I said 0 0.057, I mean 0 0.507, excuse me. All right, so I was able to figure out this was a binomial distribution, and that just allows me to use some calculator commands. So if I want this probability that I have exactly four, that's the equal sign. So I want the probability that X equals four, that the number of customers who request a medium in this sample of 12 is exactly four. And I have a calculator command for that. We have binomial PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and do 12.507 and then 4, and let's see what that number is. So again, I'm going to head to my calculator, and these commands are the same whether you're on the app or the physical calculator. So i got to go down to binomial PDF this time, and we're going to do 12.5, oops, excuse me, 0.507, and then we want four successes out of those 12 trials. So we have about a 0.114 or an 11% probability. And that's my answer. All right. Thanks so much, everyone.